Hi, television family. Good to see you again. Happy Thursday, 27th day of August, 2020. This is Wake Up in Anche Valley. I'm your host, Stan Kuntz. Good show for you today. Lots of stuff to get to. And another beautiful day in God's country. We have about the nicest weather anybody is having anywhere in the lower 48. At least we're not in southwest Louisiana. They're just getting hammered by this hurricane, which has been downgraded now to a tropical storm. But still, it's, uh, it's very sobering what's going on. And our friends down at the bayou, we want to wish them the very best of luck. They had something like three, no, it's closer to 600,000 people evacuate Harris County, Texas. Harris County, Texas is where Houston is located. They're in the, not quite in the eye of it, but it's it's pretty nasty there. Um, yeah, bad hurricane down there. We want to send them our best thoughts. We have gorgeous weather, lots of sunshine, 61 degrees. We're going to do it again today. Going to do it again on Friday. Things change big time on Saturday. Late on Saturday is when this cold front is going to start coming in. Winds are going to be picking up in a big way. In fact, they, uh, they even have a fire weather watch. It's going to take effect on uh, Saturday because of the high winds and the low relative humidity. So things are going to be very windy. In comes some cool weather. Big cool down coming our way. It's going to feel more like autumn. Uh, on Sunday and Monday, even though it feels more like summertime now, and it's still summertime. The autumnal equinox isn't until September 22nd, but it's it's getting to late summer kind of weather. No Mariner game to report on because they did not play yesterday. They were scheduled to play the Padres. We'll get to that. You probably know what's going on now. Also, some NBA playoff games were not played last night. We got sports to get to, and the Seahawks had another mock game at Century Link Field. Plus, Mike McNaughty has got an opinion and. Everything else you're used to. And <clears throat> yesterday, our good friend uh, Jefferson Robbins, he had a chance to talk to Dr. Peter Houck, who's a Wenatchee native. He's a retired epidemiologist. He's going to talk a little bit more about COVID-19 and what's happening and what we can expect. We got some good numbers, by the way, in COVID-19. Cases are starting to go down when we get to the news. I'll have that for you in just a couple minutes. Two and a half minutes after the hour, I'm ready. I hope you are. Let's do what we always do. Let's start out and take our little tour around North Central Washington from the cross camera. Always bats lead off. <coughs> I like the baseball analogy. Again, shorter days, about three minutes uh, less of daylight each and every day. The sun came up at 614 this morning. The sun will dip behind the foothills of the Wenatchee Valley at 749. That's 13 hours and 35 minutes of daylight. Another beautiful day yesterday. The National Weather Service pretty much hit it right on the head. 87 was the forecast high. That's what we got to. We dipped down to 59 for the overnight low on Wednesday night. And we're looking at about pretty much the same temperature. Friday looks to be the warmest day before the cold, dry air comes our way late Saturday afternoon into, Sunday, into uh, early Sunday morning. Camera two. Let's see what Megan has in store for us. We're off to see, I'm going to say, Rood Canyon. Hey, all right. Look at the tall timber there at Root Canyon. I want to say that's pointing to almost directly to the west. I don't know. I've been up on Root Canyon, but this is an angle, obviously, when you're talking about a PTZ camera on a high tower, you can kind of start losing your sense of direction. Either way you look at it, it's a beautiful view from Root Canyon. A lot of people up there, of course, use the SkyFi set up, and why not? You can live out in the middle of nowhere and still get screaming fast internet. Camera number three. Megan says, let's go see, is that Stamen Flats again? No, that's not Stamen Flats. Let me think. Hose Landing. Hey, I got it right. Hose Landing. Thank you very much. Good view there from Hose Landing. <clears throat> Looking out over at the uh, Chelan County side of the river, Hose Landing, of course, is on the Douglas County side as the sun begins to bathe the hills. Of course, they are baked to dry. We are in a big time drought. I mean, we are way behind on what should be our yearly precipitation total. And if you go back to October 1st, the National Weather Service's rain calendar, if you will, the rain season runs from October 1st through September 30th. And we are way behind on the precipitation we we're supposed to be getting. We are in a drought. We need rain. Could even get some, maybe, next week. Camera four. Where are we off to? There's Billy Goat. Phenomenal view. Don't see a lot of smoke and don't see a lot of haze from the Palmer Fire. Excellent news, by the way, on the Palmer Fires. They're getting very much the upper hand on that. It's now 68% uh, contained. In fact, they're letting some of the folks go. They're going to let some of the uh, 
some of the resources are going to be released to other fires in other areas, especially down in California. So when they let the crew go to go fight other fires, that's always good news as we look down over Pateras and Brewster up in Okanagan County. Good stuff this morning. All right. Uh, we got uh, some slides to show for you. First of all, here's your five-day outlook. Take a look at where you live. And these will be your high temperatures Thursday through Monday. As you can see, the big cool down happens uh, Saturday night into Sunday uh, and on into Monday as well. It's going to feel sort of autumnal, especially in the early morning hours with the overnight lows getting rather chilly. This is all because of that, uh, that dry, strong cold front that's forecast to move through late on Saturday into Sunday, and there's some significant winds associated with that. So that's your five-day outlook. Is it going to be cooler next week? Yep, going to be a lot cooler next week. Here's your 6 to 10-day 10, temp to 10 day temperature outlook. As you can see, the deeper blue, the cooler it is. So out there, out there in eastern Montana, it's going to be downright chilly for late August, early September. So we can expect below normal temperatures in many locations, probably right around normal for the Wenatchee Valley, but most of the inland northwest will see below normal temperatures. And is it going to be windy on Saturday? Yes, it's going to be very windy on Saturday. We're talking gusts 30 to 35 miles an hour will be common throughout the Okanagan Valley out in the Columbia Basin. Uh, and even higher gusts now here in the Wenatchee Valley and the Waterville Plateau and the higher benches in the Antioch, Chelan and Wenatchee area, we could see wind gusts uh, on Saturday night at 45 miles an hour and that's why we have a fire weather watch it starts on Saturday afternoon, goes through Saturday evening. This cool air is going to come down from Canada, so it's going to start up in the Okanagan Valley and eventually work its way down here towards the, the Wenatchee Valley. So the main impact of this is going to be low relative humidity and very strong winds. Um, get ready for it. Patriot Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling gives your home a hug. <clears throat> Let's enjoy these next couple of days, shall we? I have 87 today. Not a lot of wind. Northwest wind about 6 to 12 miles an hour. Nothing we can't live with. Beautiful day again today. Uh, just about 59 for the overnight low tonight. Very light wind expected. Friday, we do one more time. Lots of sunshine Friday. Warmest day, 90. We may not see 90 again until Tuesday or Wednesday of next week because here comes the cool air. It's going to happen really on Saturday. Lots of sunshine Saturday. It's going to be very calm in the morning as the day increases. Uh, it's going to start picking up in intensity. It'll be a northwest wind on Saturday afternoon, about 8 to 18 miles an hour. Right around sunset, it'll be 20 to 30 miles an hour. And again, here in the Wenatchee Valley, gusts above 40 miles an hour in some locations, especially up in the Waterfield Plateau and the benches that surround the Wenatchee Valley. <clears throat> so this is a very strong cold front. It's a dry cold front. There's no precipitation involved in any of this, but get ready for some windy conditions. And as you saw, it's gonna cool down a lot. Highs will only be in the mid to upper 70s on Sunday and Monday before we warm right back up again. All right, eight and a half minutes after the hour, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have your Thursday morning news. You were watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley live this morning from Studio 7 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Live channel. Hi, my name is Manuel Navarro, Chief Operating Officer at Columbia Valley Community Health. Patient safety is our top priority, including providing care that just can't wait. With enhanced safety precautions, we want to ensure you that we're able to continue providing safe and efficient in-person care at our clinic. From in-car check-in, ongoing screening, immediate rooming, your family can get the safe care that they deserve here at Columbia Valley Community Health. I have fiber at home because it allows me to do a great job in my profession. It allows me to learn things that I need to learn at home. Um, it allows my kids to hopefully one day be able to be educated because of what they learned online and what they learned from their teachers. And it allows us to have fun too as a family. And we're able to do a lot of things because of fiber internet. I'm Rudy and my family learns with fiber. about 10 minutes after the hour we have bountiful sunshine 61 degrees right around 87 for the afternoon high today which is what we got yesterday will be just about 90 on Friday big cool down and lots of wind coming especially Saturday afternoon and Saturday night and here are your headlines a 59 year old one H man was killed yesterday afternoon when the tractor he was driving was struck from behind on State Route 2 
In Dryden, the Washington State Patrol reports that Ruben Pacquiao Lopez was driving a Quoboda Orchard tractor westbound on the highway when it was struck from behind by a Dodge Dakota pickup being driven by 32-year-old Derek Cooch of Seattle. Pacquiao Lopez was thrown from the tractor, pinned underneath, pronounced dead at the scene. A passenger in the pickup, <coughs> excuse me, 32-year-old Deepak Gohill of Seattle, injured and taken by ambulance to Central Washington Hospital. The driver of the pickup and two other passengers were not injured. Look at that backup. Westbound lanes on the highway backed up for nearly three miles, almost to cashmere, during the investigation. A 72-year-old Afredo woman has died from injuries that she sustained in a head-on vehicle accident earlier this month. The Washington State Patrol says Lee Hampton died August 18th at Sacred Heart Hospital in Spokane. Hampton was driving south on Highway 17 just north of Moses Lake and back on August 4th. That's when her 1997 Oldsmobile Bravada crossed the center line and collided head-on with a 2018 Toyota RAV4 being driven by Gregory Lyswitch of Wenatchee. Lyswitch was treated for his injuries at Samaritan Hospital in Moses Lake at the time. Hampton was not wearing a seatbelt. Lyswitch was wearing a seatbelt, according to the State Patrol. State Department of Health says limited outdoor church gatherings, curbside library services, and even swimming pool classes may recommence in Chelan and Douglas counties under a new Safe Start guidance. The two, the two counties are in a modified phase one status of the state COVID-19 recovery plan. Now the provisions announced yesterday allows indoor church services at 25% of room capacity or up to 50 people, whichever it is less. They also let library patrons pick up and return materials outside the buildings, attend very small group swim classes, and go to drive-in events like movies. John Weissman is the Washington Secretary of Health. He says the changes help balance the rules between all five counties that are still in phase one. In the modified phase one approach, um, there were different activities being allowed for in different uh, counties, which made sense at the time. But it's clear that over time, it was a bit confusing. The modified phase one activities in the published sort of safe start plan were different from the approved activities in our roadmap to recovery for um, Yakima and Benton Franklin counties. And those were also different from what Chelan Douglas was putting into place. So over the last uh, few weeks, Dr. Lofi and I have been working with the um, local health folks in those counties and uh, some of their commissioners and mayors to basically try and align the approved activities. Um, and those approved activities have been approved by the governor. Um, right now, we are very focused on wanting to get our rates down so that we can get kids uh, back in school and get kids back in school full time, which means we really want to see our rates come down to less than 25 uh, cases per 100,000 population over the last 14 days. And we're really focused on that. So any sort of changes going forward, um, I think, um, are going to be sought or thought of very carefully. Um, and we really first want to see folks get to this um, phase uh, where we can uh, get the kids back in school. Now, to make things even, the new rules also reduce the number of customers that Chelan and Douglas retail stores may allow from 50% down to 30% of maximum occupancy, and they don't allow water parks like Slidewaters and Chelan to reopen. The owners of Slidewaters, which was already fined by the state for operating illegally during the pandemic, announced yesterday that they had given up efforts to reopen this year. There are signs the COVID-19 outbreak in North Central Washington is easing, even as widespread community testing. Those efforts are going to continue. For the first time in weeks, hard-hit Okanagan County reported no new positive tests on Tuesday. In Chelan and Douglas County, the cases per 100,000 population over the past 14 days has fallen below 400. It was closer to 600 per 100,000 for most of this month. Okanagan County's rate of 100,000 population was 224 on Tuesday. That's a significant improvement compared to earlier this month. Grant County also showing a decline in new cases. After a two-week closure over COVID-19 concerns, the iconic Lakeview Drive-In in Lake Chelan will reopen today, citing rising coronavirus cases in Chelan County and large crowds of visitors that were packing Chelan. 
Ownership shuttered the popular restaurant on August 11th. Now, the restaurant had previously had one employee test positive for COVID-19, but after a quarantine period, that employee was able to return to work. The Moses Lake Police Department released that video on Saturday morning. The arrest that was that followed the high-speed chase through town. The chase ended after a pit maneuver by a Grant County Sheriff's deputy and the apprehension of 33-year-old Jeremy Gilbert on numerous charges. The incident started after Gilbert reportedly rammed a patrol car several times on Eagle Drive and ended on Broadway Avenue near Gibby Road. Here is that video. Is there a gun in that vehicle? There was. There was? Okay, where is it now? I don't know. Is it under the seat? Maybe. Were you reaching for it? No, I was looking for a cigarette. Okay, look, bro, I almost shot you. I'm sorry. You were, it, know, the I... way you were reaching, You were. it looks like you were trying to, re uh, was... hey, ball, there's a gun in the car underneath the seat. Hey, sir. Sir. Yeah. Is there any way I can please smoke a cigarette? Uh, you know what? Hold on. G given the circumstances. I'm going away for a while, man. Okay. Okay. What kind of gun do you have in there? I don't know. Is it a, is it a revolver or a pistol? Pistol. It's a pistol? Is it black or silver? Black and brown. Black and brown? Yeah, green and brown. Huh. need stitches, so... Okay, let's take them. Yeah. I mean, so there's no way? Yeah, I, I'll try to get you one at the hospital, okay? I'm, I'm look at me. I will try. As soon as you're medically cleared, I will try to get you one. One quick update on the Palmer fire while I have you here. It's mostly good news. Uh, it's mostly now in the mop-up stage. It is now uh, the Palmer fire up near Oroville, 68% contained. It remains at 17,735 acres, so it didn't get any bigger. And as I mentioned before, they're releasing some of the firefighting personnel to fight other fires. They're just going to hold and secure the fire. They're not expecting any significant growth. Obviously, the next 48 hours are critical before the strong winds hit the Okanagan Valley on Saturday afternoon. By the way, the cause of the Palmer fire is still not known, but for those residents up there, it's almost all good news. That's what's making headlines at 19 minutes after the hour. We're going to have a newscast for you at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock. We're, we're real good about that. We don't have a preview from Grant, so I'll just say watch the handsome and debonair Grant Olson and the even more handsome and more debonair Eric Grantstrom with sports. If you want to drop us a line, let us know how we're doing, or you got a news tip for us, you can email us, news at ncwlife.com, news at ncwlife.com. You can contact us via our website, our homepage, ncwlife.com. You'll see the contact icon at the top of the screen, or go to our Facebook page and drop us a line via Facebook Messenger. We're going to take a break. Didn't play baseball last night. The Mariners didn't, and some other teams didn't as well. Also, some uh, NFNBA playoff games weren't held. And we'll tell you why when we come back. Sports is one minute away. You're watching Wake Up in Anchi Valley on the NCW Life Channel. It's estimated that one-third of Americans do not have a financial plan. 
At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let DA Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. At Harvest Valley Pest Control, we know you are committed to making your home and business a healthy and pest-free place. Hi, I'm David. Give us a call and we'll give you a firm price over the phone and schedule a time that works for you. We will do an in-depth 30-point healthy home or business inspection and craft a customized plan of action designed specifically for your pest issue. Give us a call or visit our website today. One minutes after the hour, let's talk about sports. The Mariners players, they voted unanimously not to play last night's game in San Diego to protest racial injustice that they feel is still going on in this country. D. Gordon spoke for the team when he said, and I'm quoting now, as you see on the screen, there are serious issues in this country. For me and for many of my teammates, the injustices, violence, death, and systematic racism is deeply personal. This is impacting not only my community, but very directly my family and friends. Our team voted unanimously not to play tonight. End quote. Marco Gonzalez also took to Twitter in support of his teammates. Here's his statement. I am extremely proud to be a part of this group. We have listened, loved, and supported one another through this time, but I am heartbroken for my brothers and teammates who fear for their lives and their families' lives on a daily basis. This isn't about baseball right now. As far as the Mariners themselves are concerned, they came out with a statement, including the hashtag Black Lives Matter, saying, quote, the Seattle Mariners respect the team's decision not to play tonight's game. The Seattle Mariners stand with their players as they speak out with their word of actions against social injustice. The Mariners and Padres game wasn't the only professional game not played last night. The Milwaukee Bucks started this trend, saying they would not play their playoff game against Orlando, after which all three playoff games in the NBA were postponed. In addition, Major League Baseball games in Milwaukee and San Francisco were not played. The statement from Major League Baseball is this. Given the pain in the communities of Wisconsin and beyond following the shooting of Jacob Blake, we respect the decisions of a number of players not to play tonight. Major League Baseball remains united for change in our society, and we will be allies in the right to end racism and injustice. Now today's schedule across the world of sports pretty much up in the air right now, especially the NBA playoffs. The Mariners are scheduled to play the final game of their series this afternoon at 12:10. Taiwan Walker will take on uh, Danielson Lament. We'll see if they actually play that game at Petco Park this afternoon. Seahawks play their second mock game at CenturyLink Field on Wednesday. Prior to the game, several players took a knee during the national anthem in light of, uh, of the shooting of the black man that you know about now in, in uh, Wisconsin. Coach Pete Carroll addressed what he and his players continue to deal with. The fact that, that this occurred again, uh, Jacob um, Blake, you know, murder, and in plain view, plain sight, and all that is just such a horrific thing that how, however we respond, we talked about it again today with our guys just to and, uh, try to give some some moments to the thought of the families and everybody has to go through all that stuff. There's, um, it's, you know, I heard heard Doc Rivers talking today, and and uh, Doc did, did a great job of, of stating that this is just ridiculous that we're putting up with this. Is, I can't even imagine that this continues to happen. Uh, how I don't know how somebody could ever do that under the circumstances and the awareness that everybody should have right now, but it continues to happen, so it continues to be a real problem. And uh, there's a lot of problems, and but that's just one of the ones that just jumps out at us. And so um, I really applaud those guys for, for taking the night. And, and uh, but that we all know that's not enough. It's just a statement, and the, the what is important, and everybody that's involved knows it's what we do about it and what we keep doing to, to straighten things out and get things right. This whole thing is is, is ridiculous, and, and anybody that doesn't recognize that just isn't paying attention. Just like the last mock game over the weekend, no cameras were allowed to show much football, but there were some highlights. Coach Carroll says he walked away pretty happy. 
This was a good day for us, really good day that we were able to get through all of the stuff we needed to get through and come back and clean some things up from, from week one when we came in the stadium. Um, felt like we had pretty good rhythm, you know, with the looking for the rhythm between sequences and plays and changing from offense to defense and all that and the kicking game stuff. Um, again, uh, Brian Schneider and, and, uh, and Larry Isley did a really good job to handle that thing today, so that was really well done. So it was good work. Um, Saw some some uh, good stuff throwing and catching today. Russ, Russ threw the ball real nice, and the guys made some nice plays. Uh, Greg Olson looked good catching the ball. Um, DK came back with another big touchdown. Uh, Jacob Hollister looked, looked sharp. Um, uh, Locke did a good job. D Demo, I think David Moore had three catches for the day. So it was a good job of throwing the ball around. And, and I, but I thought the other side of it was I thought Carlos Hyde looked really good again. And he, he seems to just continue to be right on the, on the mark. He's uh, in there. Uh, He's going to be able to be a big factor for us. Carroll said there was one notable absence on defense yesterday due to an accident at the home of one of the Seahawks. Uh, Marquise Blair had a big day. Uh, you, you noticed that um, uh, Jamal did not play the day. Jamal had a had a domestic accident, but he cut his finger slicing some strawberries, and he hit his finger. So uh, he had to have a few stitches. So we, we kept him out not to make him have to use that thing in case you were wondering. So it's a very minor situation. Easy for me to say he almost cut his finger off. So uh, but anyway, he, he's, he'll be fine. But it did give Marquise a chance to play today. And, and uh, he did a nice job. Obviously, two huge, huge plays turning the ball over. Uh, both times we've come, come to the stadium. I'm pleased that we're we've taken care of the ball in offense. It's something that, you know, is just it's just the foundation of what we're all about is taking care of the ball. And, and uh, so that's good that we've knocked that out for a couple of weeks. Marquise Blair is in his second season out of Utah, and fellow defensive back Shaquille Griffin says Blair is definitely feeling more comfortable. Um, he's comfortable. Um, you know, I felt like last year, you know, he was kind of going with the flow. You know, he was a rookie. He was learning. But now he's playing more like a, like, more like a vet. Let's say that. And um, he's comfortable. You can feel it when he's out there with us. He don't feel like he shouldn't be out there. And, that, and that's the main part. You know, you have people who come in and play in different groups. And they feel like they don't belong. And um, that's the, the last thing he thinks about when he's out there with us. Uh, he feels like he's a part. He feels like he's doing everything that he can do to contribute. And he's doing that. He's showing up and expect, making the plays that we expect him to make. And, you know, he came up big twice today, which is cool. You know, it's cool to see that because we can expect that from him during the season. So, And it's, it's awesome. So um, he's, he's just comfortable now. You know, it seems like he's been doing it for a while. And, and it's cool to see he come to his own. So uh, he's doing an amazing job so far. Seahawks are back at the VBAC for more training camp today. They're just 18 days away from the first game of the NFL season down in Atlanta on September 13th. We shall see. Finally, let's look at our sports schedule that we have coming up. Hey, it's Thursday. That means hockey night. we got the Wenatchee Wild and the Merritt Centennial, so you can check it out tonight at 7 o'clock. High school football tomorrow night as the Wenatchee Panthers host Mount Sy from last year. That'll kick off at 6.30. On Saturday, you can check out the Cashmere and Eastmont Girls Soccer at 2 o'clock, followed by the broadcast of last weekend's racing at the Bonanche Valley Super Oval at 6. And those are just some of the games that people aren't playing. At 29 minutes after the hour, it is August 27th. It is National Just Because Day. Because, well, just because. Do what you want to do. Just because. Celebrate this day any way you want to celebrate it. Just because every day we do things at work or at home that's expected of us or required of us. We do things because we have to do them. I think every job that you'll ever have, you, there's one part of your job that you kind of have to do every day that you really don't want to do, but you've got to do it anyway. Um, today, this does not apply. Yeah, do something without rhyme or reason. Um, always wanted to buy that certain object that you saw at the store. Go buy it today just because. Take a vacation day and go golfing or fishing just because eat something you shouldn't eat just because surprise somebody with a gift just because um, just because it's just just because day no rhyme no reason just because always celebrate it on August 27th because I saw it on the internet all right let's do today in the history that is the palace of the Sultan of Zanzibar. As it looked uh, back in the state in 1896, Zanzibar was a British protectorate, if you will, the British, you know, that was their very real estate. But they let Zanzibar have some kind of independence so long as Zanzibar and the Sultan didn't get too out of control. We were going to leave you alone, you know, just don't.
don't rile us up, that's what the British said. Um, well, the Sultan, Sultan Hamad of Zanzibar, who was a good friend of the British, did what the British told him to do, he died a couple of days before, on August 25th, 1896. His 29-year-old nephew, who quite probably killed him, uh, Khalid bin Barash, de declared himself Sultan of Zanzibar, moved into the royal palace. Now, the 29-year-old nephew who took over the job was not friendly to the British. The British said, um, you did this without checking with us, and you're really supposed to check with us. And you're out. We want our guy in. It's somebody else. And he said, no, I'm not going anywhere. And hostilities increased. And finally, on this date in 1896, 124 years ago, the Anglo-Zanzibar War began at 9 in the morning, and at 9.38, it was all over. Um, the British won. It, was, it still remains to this day the shortest recorded war in history. Didn't want to mess with the British back in 1896, and that's what they did to the palace of uh, the Sultan of Zanzibar. All you got to do is pay attention. Shortest war ever lasted 38 minutes. We could use more of those. You would think that this would have happened more than once, but it only happened once. August 25th, 1965, 55 years ago today, for the first and only time, Elvis Presley and the Beatles got together. They met at Elvis's mansion in Bel Air. The Beatles were on a break from their 1965 world tour. Uh, they were renting a house from Zaza Gabor. <clears throat> they made all the arrangements. The arrangements to meet Elvis was done through Colonel Tom Parker and Brian Epstein. Uh, there were very strict ground rules for this meeting. Basically, no press, no photos, no recordings, no leaking of plans in advance. They didn't want a bunch of people around the gates of Elvis's mansion. Um, the encounter was not a great success. They met together for about three hours. Neither the Beatles nor Elvis really knew what to do with one another. Finally, Elvis said, if you guys are just going to sit there and look at me all night, I'm going to go to bed. So that kind of broke the ice, and then they started to play around a little bit. Uh, Elvis had a pool table. Ringo Starr loved pool, so Ringo went out and played pool with members of Elvis's Memphis Mafia. George Harrison found the only member of Elvis's entourage who enjoyed marijuana, so George and this guy went out on Elvis's porch and smoked a joint, and John and Paul and Elvis sat around and jammed a little bit. It is rumored that a tape, an audio recording of Elvis and the Beatles playing some music together was made. It's never come to light. Elvis and the Beatles get together for the first and only time on this day back in 1965 and a much sadder note in the world of rock and roll. We lost Stevie Ray Vaughan 30 years ago today. Uh, he had just played a gig at the Alpine Valley Music Theater in uh, East Troy, Wisconsin. Robert Cray was on the bill, as was uh, Eric Clapton. Eric Clapton had leased a helicopter to take him and his crew away. Um, uh, Clapton changed his mind. Word got to Stevie Ray Vaughan that, hey, there were three seats available on this helicopter. Turns out there was only one seat available on the helicopter, and his brother Jimmy Vaughan had already claimed the seat. Stevie Ray Vaughan said, can I take the seat from you? Uh, and Jimmy said, yes. Stevie Ray Vaughan hopped on board the helicopter, and it flew into a ski slope under poor visibility. The pilot, Stevie Ray Vaughan, and three members of Eric Clapton's entourage were killed. The initial word for a while there on August 27th, 1990, because Eric Clapton was the one who leased the helicopter that Clapton himself may have been killed. That, of course, was not the case. Uh, it turns out eventually what, what had happened was the pilot, the, the ski hill that the helicopter flew into was a man-made ski hill and not a lot of aerial maps provided to pilots. The ski hill wasn't on the map because it was man-made. It wasn't natural. Steve Ravon died 30 years ago today and he was only 35 years old, but the music lives on birthdays. Speaking of music, we normally don't do vice presidents' birthdays. We just don't as a rule of thumb. Presidents we do. Vice presidents, no. But Charles Dawes gets a special nod out today. He was born in the state in 1865, uh, died in 1951 at the age of 85. He was Calvin Coolidge's vice president. He accomplished absolutely nothing as vice president. He was a Nobel Peace Prize laureate, but his claim to fame for Charles Dawes, he wrote the number one billboard hit, It's All in the Game, sung by Tommy Edwards, which went to number one in the 1950s. How many vice presidents can say, well, I wrote a number one hit on the Billboard Hot 100? Charles Dawes did. And we do have a presidential birthday today. Lyndon Baines Johnson, to me, the most fascinating political figure 
in this country in the 20th century. Uh, it's not Nixon, it's not FDR, it's not Truman. It's Lyndon Baines Johnson, an interesting man to say the least. He was the 36th president of the United States, died of a massive heart attack in 1973 at the age of 64, ran away to California. At the age of 15, ran out of money, came back home with his tail between his legs. He worked as a janitor so he could pay his tuition at Southwest State Teachers College. He taught high school, then he became a congressional aide on his very first date with Lady Bird. He proposed and she accepted. And Lyndon Johnson was known as the Double Day. When he was president of the United States, he worked 18 hours a day. He would work from about six in the morning till about two in the afternoon. He would have lunch, take a nap, get up about an hour later and work until about two in the morning. He worked 18 hours a day. He said, I can cram in two full nine hour days. Lyndon Johnson, born in the state in 1908. All right, going to take a break. Mike Magnotti has got an opinion coming up. And then our good friend Jefferson Robbins had a chance to talk to an epidemiologist who's a native here at the Wenatchee Valley, Dr. Peter Hauck. Uh, he, is a, he worked in the epidemic, epi, he was a uh, intelligence service for epidemic intelligence, trying to find out where outbreaks uh, of pandemics could happen around this world. It's a fascinating interview that Jefferson did with Dr. Hauk, and you'll see that when we come back. You're watching Wake Up in Anchi Valley on the NCW Live channel. Hi there, it's Les Schwab Tires. Well, more like Les Schwab alignment and brakes and shocks and wheels and tires. Now, some tire places don't offer all that. They only sell tires, and we're not sure how they sleep at night because all those services affect things like steering and stopping. That's why we offer more than tires to help keep you safe. Stop by or book an appointment at LesSchwab.com. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. Don't worry, all the fun is around the corner. There's no better time to get ready than now with Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa Sale. Stock up and save sale is now going on in store and online at bluelagoonpoolandspa.com. Even pool heaters are on sale. Financing available upon approval. Credit 24 month, no interest with equal payments. Stop by today or order online at bluelagoonpoolandspa.com. Free water testing available in store or curbside. Don't wait, the sale is going on now. Doghouse Motorsports just won Best Motorsports Store for the sixth year in a row. Is it the great facility? Is it the fantastic products? Or is it? I'm Bobby. And I'm Tabor. I'm Mike. And I'm Glenn. Hi, I'm Todd. I'm Jeff. And this is the Doghouse Service Team. Hi, I'm Dee. And I'm Dwayne. And I'm Kathy. Come on in and experience the Doghouse. Are you in the Doghouse? At Earthwise Pet, we take an all-natural approach to wellness and nutrition. Our professional certified groomers were trained by the best in the Pacific Northwest. Our staff here at Earthwise Pet are all certified in pet nutrition. We are here to help you select the perfect food, supplement, and anything else you may need to make sure your pet is living its best and most healthy life. Earthwise Pet, nutrition center and wellness spa. Online or in the store, we are here for you. Hey folks, Carrie from Blueberry Hills in Manson, where we've got huge news. We've started our Blueberry u Pick. It's a great time to toss the family in the car and get on out to Blueberry Hills, where you can get the best down-home scratch country cooking around and pick some of the world's most delicious and largest blueberries that have been high desert farmed. This makes for an intense blueberry flavor, and they are so much fun to pick. Our fields are open 8 to 2.30 daily and restaurant from 8 to 3. So come on out and join us. When you call Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, you get 35 years of experience and customer service in the Wenatchee Valley. Dick's friendly staff strongly believe in repairing before replacing and service all major brands of HVAC units. Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning is your local independent trained comfort specialists, proudly serving all of North Central Washington. Call 884-6444 today. Mike Mad Dog Magnetti, and everybody's entitled to my opinion. Uh, like I've said before, I'm a regular church goer, so I run into this guy who I used to see at church, and as I haven't seen him for a while, I ask him, where's he been? Is everything okay? He said, you know, I stopped coming, and the reason was uh, I've been going there to church for a year, and no one has ever invited me out to lunch. 
Now, what kind of reason is that? Was he going to church to arrange, arrange lunch dates? And, and what I should have asked him is, did you ever invite anyone to lunch? Wouldn't it, and wouldn't it be a good idea if maybe we should do unto others what we would have them do to you rather than expect people to do to you just because you happen to be there? This is my Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. At Town Toyota, we believe in our community, and we're proud to support this broadcast of local sports. Town Toyota defines reliability and value in both its products and in the dealership itself. We are home to legendary products like the RAV4, Highlander, and Camry, not to mention Tundras and Tacoma trucks. Of course, we offer service for everything we sell and a great selection of pre-owned and certified vehicles as well. So enjoy the game and visit Town Toyota for all your automotive needs. How do you know when it's time to go to Boswell's Furniture? When you know the look you love, the colors you want, but need a little design help to bring it all together. With Boswell's complimentary design service, Glenn, Buffy, and Teresa guide you until your vision becomes reality. More styles, more fabrics, and more choices of quality home furnishings fill Boswell's expansive two-story showroom so you can see it and feel it before you buy. Come into Boswell's and explore the endless possibilities of home furnishings. Boswell's on Easy Street. It's closer than you think. What is it to be a volunteer firefighter? Is it the gear, the training, the vehicles you learn to drive, the honor of protecting your community? Time, energy, sweat, sometimes blood and even tears. Every call may not be a victory. Sometimes you'll walk away wondering if you helped at all. But sometimes you will be a hero. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere is your place for famous blues, brews, and barbecue. Currently, Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere is open for dine-in and take-out. Owner Justin Hefner and his staff are just as excited as you to get back to their regularly scheduled full menu, music, and poker. So stay tuned. Meanwhile, Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere is serving a limited menu for lunch and dinner, dine-in, or take-out. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere, the coolest place in town. We are back at 42 minutes after the hour. Dr. Peter Hauk grew up right here in the Wenatchee Valley. Then he headed off to a career with the CDC's Epidemic Intelligence Service. That's the agency that investigates infectious, infectious diseases uh, around the world. And then they develop strategies to how to fight that infectious disease here in the United States. He's recently retired and he joined the state resource team that's managing the COVID-19 pandemic right here in the Wenatchee Valley, he had a chance to visit with our own Jefferson Robbins, who asked him as an epidemiologist, what makes this COVID-19 so unique? Obviously, it's causing a lot of suffering, a lot of death. It's completely disrupted uh, our society, our economy. But, but from an epidemiologic point of view, it's very, very interesting. Not only because it's a brand new virus, um, the way it has spread uh, throughout the world is phenomenal. It's extremely good at spreading. But also, uh, for instance, the, the, the number of symptoms it causes is, is phenomenal, making it both uh, interesting but also difficult to study. Uh, for instance, um, not too long into the course of the outbreak, people started to notice that folks who were infected couldn't smell and they couldn't taste. And this has become one of the most important symptoms that we look for, uh, and yet it's something that people have never thought about. I, I can't recall any other time in my career looking at a disease where something like that was one of the really important features of it. But it's the, the virus, as, it, as is so common in infectious diseases, has basically stayed a couple of steps ahead of us. We think we've, we think we've beaten it down. It flares back up as soon as we let our guard down a little bit. It's kept us uh, humble. Certainly, as, as an epidemiologist, it's kept me humble. Uh, Back in uh, late January, when the first case was reported here in Washington, I was asked a lot of times what I thought would happen with, with the, the outbreak. And I was thinking a lot about the first SARS outbreak back in the early 2000s, which lasted for a year and a half. And there really weren't that many cases. I think there were 800 cases in the US. 
it wasn't that big a deal. And because this was, this is also a coronavirus and the SARS virus was in the same big family, I thought it might behave the same way. Well, clearly I was wrong. And it's been one big surprise, mostly bad surprise after another. Well, you're officially retired, but you were asked to come back into the field um, as part of the state resource team that's uh, uh, dealing with the virus here in Chelan and Douglas counties. So can you tell me a little bit about your role on that team? Well, retirement is all a relative term. Uh, I retired from the U.S. Public Health Service uh, in 2013 after uh, 28 years uh, on active duty. The last 10 of those years are with the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, uh, stationed in Seattle, working on pandemic planning and the whole role that uh, the movement of people around the world, uh, migrants, immigrants, uh, air travelers play in the spread of pandemic disease. Uh, when I finished in, again, in, in 2013, I started doing a lot of refugee work and you know this, that, and the other thing. And when this came up, um, I thought, well, you know, I've got some skills and some knowledge that might be useful to somebody. So I called the state uh, Department of Health and did some work for them on personal protective equipment, PPE. And I also called the Shaline Douglas Health District because I, in the, long ago I'd done some work over here. And I thought, well, you know, maybe they could, maybe they could use a hand. Uh, also, I, I feel a certain, a certain obligation to Wenatchee. Wenatchee is my hometown. Um, so many of the people in this town had a, a, a phenomenal influence on my career, not only on encouraging me as I was trying to get into medical school, which is not an easy task, but also along the way, giving me uh, you know, little suggestions, uh, uh, just a lot of help. So I, I felt a certain obligation, uh, a good obligation, to uh, do some work over here. And so eventually I, did, uh, I was doing volunteer work uh, the the uh, survey that Confluence Health and the Health District did uh, I don't know, about a month and a half ago, I worked on that. And then it became clear that the Health District could use uh, quite a bit more time. And the uh, state was nice enough to come up with some funding for me. So I'm, I'm here. I'm very happy to be back uh, working in my hometown. And um, it's, it's, been a, it's been a great time so far. What's the nature of the work that you're doing uh, uh, with the resource team and, and what are you seeing uh, from an epidemiological perspective locally in the two counties? What I'm doing mostly is trying to help them figure out the epidemiology of the disease. In other words, the, who's getting it, where are those people, when are they getting it, what are their symptoms, a description of how the, the, the disease is distributed in these two counties, um, and to get an idea, mostly, of how we might design control measures that are really focused on what the situation is here. And the situation here is kind of interesting. As, you're, as I think you're probably aware, there's been quite a bit of disease in the agricultural worker community. And this has been a real challenge because uh, many of these people uh, live in, in, uh, in basically dormitory housing. Uh, very close to each other, spread is much easier. Um, and we're working on that right now. We're, 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 and for instance, we're trying to find out what's going on in some hot spots uh, with the idea of trying to control the disease in one hot spot, then move on to another hot spot and eventually uh, move in to the, the Wenatchee metro area. From a public health perspective, what aren't we doing here in the Wenatchee Valley? What haven't we adopted to control the spread that we should be doing? I mean, are there uh, safeguards that we could be better at? Where we, might be, uh, where we might be lacking, where I think we've been lacking, is in going after the disease aggressively. Uh, what we've been doing so far has largely been reactive. A case, come, a case is detected somehow, we go out and investigate, um, isolate the case, quarantine the exposed people. But it's sort of been chasing a little, a little bit like chasing our tails. And um, I, I think we can be a lot more aggressive, actually go out and look for people who are infected, not just wait for them to be reported to us. As far as public health uh, activities in the community go, uh, I've been really impressed by how people's behavior seems to have changed 
in terms of wearing masks. Oh, and, and by the way, I'm not wearing one today, but I'm in this conference room all by myself and it's pretty well ventilated. So uh, normally when I step out that door, I'll have a mask on. But you know, I've seen over the course of the last uh, month or so, uh, a lot more people in, in the community here wearing masks. Now, a place where I think we might be able to do a whole lot better is in terms of what people call social distancing, staying in what we've been recommending is uh, about six feet apart. Uh, I've seen a lot of people really close together, not wearing masks, by the way, and that's a place where I think we could do a whole lot better. One of the th obstacles I think we might run into is, is COVID fatigue. Um, yeah. People trying to deal with the outbreak, trying to do what uh, they've been asked to do, but saying, you know, look, it's been months. My business is still closed. I can't go see mom or dad in the, in the elder care home. Um, what do you think Shalane Douglas's chances are like, to turn the corner on this soon and achieve those benchmarks that have been set by the state? Right. Well, you, you know, those are, that, that's a real, the, the COVID fatigue is very real. Um, I've been talking to a number of people you know, recently, just friends of mine, about how tired we are of having this hanging over our heads. It's now been since uh, January and people are fed up with it. I mean, we, 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 even, even if we do go ahead and get close to people around us, there's still this uh, lingering sense of perhaps of danger, perhaps of guilt. It's not quite right. And I think it's, it's been really, really pervasive in people's lives. Um, what we can do, well, right now, it, it's, it's pretty limited. But fortunately, what we can do is, is also not really terrible maintain uh, distance from, from people uh, outside your family. Six, six feet is what everybody says because that's felt to be the range of the respiratory droplets that are probably the major uh, mode of transmission of the disease from one person to another. Keeping your hands away from your face, which as I'm sure everybody knows, is way harder to do than you think it would be. People are constantly you know, scratching, scratching their head, uh, doing this, doing that. Um, keep doing that. Wear masks. Uh, I, I, know that, I know that masks have become a big issue that's more than just a public health issue. Uh, people don't like to be told to wear masks. And the, the point I've, I've tried to make with people about masks is that they should do it, not because they're being told by the governor to do it or, or by CDC or by, by someone else. Don't do it because you've been told to do it. Do it because it's the right thing to do it. Do it because you want to protect your friends, your, your family, you know, your mother, your grandmother, uh, all these people who are important to you. It's one, of the, it's one of the most important things you can do to protect those people whom you love. And do it because, again, do it because it's the right thing to do for them, not so much because somebody tells you to do it. For Frito Mocha with Whip. The espresso shakes are my most favorite because I can get any flavor. Uh, peanut butter chocolate for pita. Definitely the espresso shakes. My favorite is the mocha for pitas. A peach Red Bull. Family roles change with time. You may find yourself being an unpaid caregiver to a loved one. Caregiving can be rewarding, but also stressful. Taking care of yourself is vital. Aging and Adult Care of Central Washington has low or no cost services for unpaid caregivers, such as in-home support, care supplies, and counseling. Connect in your local area by calling Aging and Adult Care at 800-572-4459 and mention you're interested in caregiver support. By working together as a community, we can all play a part in promoting children's well-being and strengthening families. April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month. CASA and Together for Youth are dedicated to supporting families and reducing the risk of child abuse and neglect. Join us in keeping kids safe. If you suspect a child is being abused or neglected, please call 1-866-363-4276.
You don't have to be a member to enjoy the view and dine in style at Highlander Bar and Grill located at the beautiful Highlander Golf Course in East Wenatchee. Highlander Grill offers breakfast, lunch, and dinner with dine-in or takeout options. Highlander Bar and Grill's friendly staff is here to serve you seven days a week. Call for reservations Friday night prime rib dinner. Contact Shalane, Highlander Grill's site coordinator, to schedule your corporate event or special occasion today. And we are back on this Thursday edition of Wake Up in Edgy Valley. I'm Dan Coons. Beautiful morning, clear skies, sunshine, 65 degrees. We're going to have two more days of this stuff. Uh, we're gonna, our, high, uh, our peak high is going to be on Friday, and then a very strong and dry cold front will begin to roll into our area. It's going to come from the north, come down from the south, going to bring usher in some cool air from the Gulf of Alaska down through Canada. Not only is it uh, bringing us some much cooler air, it's going to bring us a lot of wind. We're going to get to those details uh, in just a couple minutes. First of all, we have uh, some slides to show for you. First of all, your five-day outlook. As you can see, as you look across the board through Monday, when H is in for a big cool down, 87 our forecast high today. As you can see, a little bit warmer in the OMAC area and maybe a degree or two warmer in Moses Lake. So that 87 degrees is above normal. We're normally right around 84, 83 or 84 for the afternoon high. So. It's going to very, be a very pleasant day again today. We do it again on a, on, on a Friday. Warmest day uh, that we're going to have probably till early next week. As you can see, 90 degrees is the forecast high for the Wenatchee Valley and Moses Lake up in the OMAC area. You'll be in the lower 90s. And then here comes the cool down. Look at the big temperature drop. We go down to 83 degrees. Yep, it's going to be cooler early next week with a, with a pretty good chance of very cold air in eastern Montana. Grant is from eastern Montana, and he's used to that kind of stuff, but a pretty good blast of Arctic air is going to start dropping down. It starts on Saturday night. It's going to really last into Monday, and there's going to be some locations they are going to have overnight lows in the mid to upper 30s as we transition from August into September. Now, it's not going to be nearly that cold here in the Wenatchee Valley, but in some locations, like up in Medellin Falls and Deer Park and off into the Idaho Panhandle, they're going to have overnight lows uh, in the low 40s. Hard to believe, yeah. And of course, the autumnal equinox isn't until September 22nd, so it's late summer weather, but we still got still some summer to go. And then here comes the wind, and we talked about this, very windy on Saturday. Uh, here in the Wenatchee Valley, the winds aren't gonna pick up in intensity until we get to Saturday afternoon and Saturday night. It's gonna start getting windy to the north of us. The main impact of these strong winds with this cold front coming in uh, is uh, the winds are gonna be really strong, especially in the early evening into the overnight hours. Now, for you folks up in the Okanagan Valley, well, they continue to fight the Palmer Fire. They've made excellent progress on the Palmer Fire, but the next two days are going to be critical because starting Saturday about noonish or so up in the Okanagan Valley, also at McColumbia Basin for that matter, uh, you'll have winds, uh, sustained winds at 20 to 25, <coughs> even 30 miles an hour, and gusts in the Okanagan Valley up to 35 miles an hour. Here in the Wenatchee Valley, Late on Saturday afternoon, basically after sunset Saturday night, we can have gusts are possible here in the Wenatchee Valley in the benches, the exposed areas, say Wenatchee Heights, Demilt, places like that. Um, and in the Antiat area and in the Chelan area, we can see gusts at 45 miles an hour. And that includes the Waterville Plateau, so very, very windy conditions. And we have a fire weather watch that starts on Saturday afternoon and goes through Saturday night. So it's cold air, it's, it's not packing any moisture, but it's bringing in some considerably cooler air, at least than what we've been dealing with over the last uh, week or so, which has just been gorgeous weather. So from the National Weather Service, one more time, here you go. Lots of sunshine, high today of about 87, a little bit of a breeze, not much, about six to 10 miles an hour. It's a northwest breeze expected today. Tonight, clear skies, 59 for the overnight low. Again, a little bit of light wind becoming uh, almost non-existent in the overnight hours. Friday, just about 90 degrees, very little wind on Friday. Things start changing uh, on Saturday. Fr Friday night looks beautiful, 60 for the overnight low, nice summer evening. Here comes the wind on Saturday. Now we're gonna cool down, as you can see, only to 83 degrees. The big story is the wind. It's gonna start picking up in intensity in the early afternoon. A northwest wind about eight to 18 miles an hour as it starts coming down towards the Wenatchee Valley from uh, Omak and Okanagan down into Chelan. Very strong winds on Saturday, late Saturday afternoon and Saturday night. 
We cool down with that cold air on Monday and Tuesday, then we warm right back up again. Have a good and safe Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.